What we're going to be looking at here is bond refunding. We're replacing an existing outstanding bond with a new bond that we're going to issue here. Now Corporation A issued $3 million worth of 10% 10 year bonds here on 1 1 2010 here at 97 or 97 percent of the power of the face value. And interest is payable semi-annually here in 1 1 and 7 1 each year here. And legal and other costs incurred were $50,000 here for issuing that $3 million worth of bonds. So those are the issue costs here. Now the bonds are callable here at 101 or 101% of the face amount here. And on 1-1-2015 here, five years later here, Corporation A called these bonds and retired them using the proceeds from a new bond issue of $4 million here at, at 8 Eight percent here, ten-year bonds here on one one twenty fifteen. So they at and at one oh two or one hundred two percent of par here. So what they've done here is they uh, issued the four million dollars worth of bonds here, and they're going to use the money from that new issue here to repurchase the three million dollars worth of bonds that are outstanding or callable here at one oh one or one hundred and one percent. So when we're dealing with these bond refundings, what we have to do is we have to come up with any gain or loss on this uh, bond that we're re calling here. So what we've uh, what on this bond that we're recalling, originally we had a bond discount on it here. It was $3 million at 97%. So we have a discount here of $90,000. So and, and we have to deal with here. And we also had some bond issue cost here uh, of $50,000. And what we would have done in both cases here for the bond discount and the bond issue cost, we would have amortized them down here. And I'm, I was just showing the effective interest rate method here, the numbers for the effective interest rate method. But had you done a straight line method or something like that, you would have to come up with your um, amortized amount. So what we do in both cases here for the bond discount here in these bond issue costs, we have to determine what amount we have amortized up until uh, the period here that we're recalling them here. And that was the 10th period here. And they were recalled, uh, their bonds were recalled here on 1-1-2015 here. They were called here at that 101% here. So what just first looking at this bond discount, if we, we, in this case, the amount that I've amortized up in this point, uh, this point here was $33,741, and we had to amortize a total of $90,000 here. That was from the $2,910,000 up to $3 million here. So what we have to determine is the unamortized amount. So that's easy enough taking it off our amortization schedule here. We amortize $33,741, subtract that from the total amount that we have to amortize of 90 so the unamortized amount is $56,259. So that's what we have to deal with here to determine any gain or loss that we'll be looking at here. And then just going back to our bond issue cost here, just for a reference here, um, I started out with the carrying amount here, a uh, point of interest here, $2,860,000. And I've got that here just by taking that discount amount of $2,910,000, subtracting the $50,000 worth of issue cost here. Then we would have, again, uh, using the effective interest rate method here, I just amortize that down here to the 10th period. So we have to look at our 10th period here where the bonds are callable on 1-1-2015 here. And the, our amortize, what we have amortized to date here, at, uh, up to this date here that we're calling them is $18,860. So total amount that we have to amortize is $50,000. So we would have have to amortize them up here to uh, from 28, $2,860,000 up to the discounted amount of $2,910,000. So total amount again for the we'd have to amortize is $50,000. We amortized $18,860. So the difference is the unamortized amount here of $31,140. So this is what we have to deal with to determine any gain or loss on this recall here. Okay, so let's go up here and look at our uh, determine any gain or loss here and how we go about that. So again, we're looking at this $3 million worth of bonds here that I call that 101 here on 1-1-2015. So we have to, again, for our unamortized discount and issue costs, again on 1-1-2015 here. We calculated them down below here, but I'm just showing them here. So our discount on our bonds payable, we had the $90,000 worth total discount that we would have to do on those bonds. The amortized amount that we'd done up until this date here on 1-1-2015 was $33,740 here. $41 here. So the unamortized amount is just the difference here. This is what uh, we are going to have to take off our books or determine what our gain or losses when when we call these when we've called these bonds here and that was fifty six thousand two hundred and fifty nine dollars simply the difference here now again for our issue costs 
remember we started out with 50,000 here. We amortized up until this uh, recall, uh, call date here in 21 1 2015, 18,860. So the difference here is on unamortized amount here of $31,140 here. So now let's go down here and th in this case we're going to have a loss here on the redemption, but this is how you'd go about calculating any gain or loss on this uh, redemption or this uh, uh, recall or the uh, excuse me on the uh, replacing uh, these bonds here or the reacquisition of the bonds. So what we would do is we just take the re uh, determine our reacquisition price. Remember we're recalling all of them here or calling all of them here. Uh, the three million dollars worth of face amount here and their uh, the call amount a uh, call percentage here is 101 or 101 percent. So take that times the face amount here of three million you come up with three million thirty thousand dollars here that's what we're going to have to our reacquisition price here on those bonds that are three million dollars worth of par value bonds that are outstanding here three million thirty thousand dollars now we have to determine what our net carrying value is here and when we do that then we can determine any gain or loss here so um, we'd be subtracting our net carrying value here from our reacquisition price so our net carrying value in the bonds redeemed here was again the par value of three million three million dollars worth the unamortized discount here that we calculated above here of uh, fifty six thousand two fifty nine we'd be subtracting that here and then our unamortized issue cost here of uh, $31,140. We'd be subtracting that here from the par value. So our net carrying amount here on the bonds would just be our sum total here of $2,912,601 here. So at that date here on 1-1-2015, that's what our net carrying uh, value here are on those bonds that were redeemed, or amount that were re being redeemed here. So simply to determine any loss on the, re in this case it's a loss on the redemption, we're just comparing the net carrying value here of $2,912,601 uh, uh, $2, to the reacquisition price here of $3,030,000. Dollars. So you can see our, we are paying more here to buy back these bonds than their carrying value here. And the difference here is a represented as a loss here on the redemption of the bonds of $117,399 because our carrying value of $2,912,601 here is less than the reacquisition price that we have to pay to buy them back here at $3,000,000. $30,000. Okay, so now let's go down and look at our journal entries here. So um, what we have to do here is we have to retire the $3 million worth of bonds called at 101 or 101% and then we got to issue the new $4 million worth of bonds here at 102 or 102% here that we use for refunding. So first off, let's just looking at our initial uh, bond issue for the $3 million here. So we, I've got it laid out here where I've got assets showing here, liabilities showing here, and then our income statement account here. So uh, for our initial issue here on 1-1-2010, uh, we would have had a bonds payable here of $3 million here, and those are the ones that we're going to be re retiring here on 1-1-2015. So just going through it. on 1-1-2010, uh, bonds payable as a liability, credit that here for $3 million, and then we would have we would have received cash here for them at that at that time. The, as the I'm not going to show all I'm going to show here is the entries here uh, when we recall these bonds here to make them or we, the recall on these bonds here, not any uh, previous amounts of uh, interest because we just want to look at the recall here. So uh, we issued them here at three million dollars uh, here in 2010, but then. We're recalling them here. We're having to pay cash. The reacquisition price here on our balance sheet of three million thirty thousand dollars here on one one twenty fifteen here. So, uh, in that case here, we would have um, taken credit at our cash here that we had to pay here that reacquisition price, and then we would debit or remove those bonds payable that we have the three million dollars worth here that we're retiring it here, and then what we would do here. Uh, we'll just look at that here. And then we had two other things we have to deal with here. We have to deal with the discount on those bonds payable, how we remove that off the books here, and our bond issue costs, the deferred charge here. This is a long-term asset or a deferred charge, how we have to amortize that off. Now, not to confuse anything, I just show the original bond issue costs here and the original discount. Now, we would have amortized um, an amount here and already reduced it by the amortization up to that period for 
up to the period that we're recalling here, but I'm just showing the amount that we're taking off here, what's remaining that has to be uh, taken off the books here. And for our bond issue cost here, we had, remember, that $31,140 here that we had credit or take off the books here in 1-1-2015. And for our don bond discount here, we would have had to take, we originally had 90000 here, and we amortized whatever the balance was up until that point here. And then the remaining amount here, unamortized amount, was $56,259. So we credit or we take this discount on our bonds payable off the books here at that amount here. So what has happened here, if you go, we'll just go back up here and then we can look at how we calculated any gain or loss here. And in this case, we recognize the redemption loss here going over to our income statement. And that was on that bond redemption that uh, was $117,399 here in 1-1-2015. So that's how it goes to our income statement. We recognize that loss. And with these bond redemptions here, or these uh, bond calls here with the um, uh, bond refunding, you have to recognize any gain or loss. So that's what we calculated up above here. And then the other thing is here, uh, not to belabor the point here, but for this bond, I'm, I'm just showing here where we issued this new bond here, the $4 million worth here. In 1-1-2015, we set up a bond liability here on our balance sheet for $4 million here. And then the cash we received, uh, we debit that here. And one one twenty fifteen here four million dollars at one hundred and two percent so it is four million eighty thousand dollars here and I'm not showing any issue costs in this case here all I'm showing is the the bond here that we're going to have payable here the cash received and then one other thing here we have a premium because we were issued at a premium here four million and there was a two percent premium here we were issued at 102 and we have a two percent premium here on 1 1 2015 so we would have credited our bonds uh, payable premium here of eighty thousand dollars on our balance sheet i didn't want to confuse anything with the numbers here it may be a bit confusing but on our uh, when we go back to these bond issue costs and our bond discount here we already amortized whatever amount we did up until that period here so we had fifty thousand plus whatever we amortized and all i'm showing here is the remaining amount that we have to remove off the books here on 1 1 2015 for our bond issue costs here and also our bond discount here because that original amount of bond here was issued at a discount. That is what remains here and then all of our credits and debits uh, go and we it balances here with our loss here debit $117,399. So this is where we recognize any gain or loss here on the redemption of this refunding here. So that uh, didn't want to confuse anything here I just went through it really quick here but let's go up here and look at it one more time here. So what we're doing here, just to review here, uh, on this bond refunding, we have to take whatever original amount of bonds we had outstanding there, and we have to determine what their uh, reacquisition price is here, and then we have to uh, subtract uh, the carrying value from that reacquisition price to determine any gain or loss here on the redemption for due to this refunding here. And you can see here, to determine the net carrying value, we have to take the unamortized discount up into that period here. That's what uh, hasn't been amortized on the bond up to the point that it's being, or we amortized everything up to the point that it's being recalled here, but we have this unamortized discount Count. That's what's sitting on our books that has to be taken off here, uh, uh, remains here for the am an amortized discount in this case and an unamortized issue cost. Had the bonds been issued at a premium, then we'd have had an unamortized premium that we'd have to be dealing with here. But I'm just showing the case here where we had a discount here. And in this case, we had um, a loss on the redemption, simply the difference between the carrying value here at the point of that uh, recall and then the reacquisition price. So that's how you deal with this here, not to go through and to confuse everything, but you have to be um, know what your unamortized amount is, and that comes right off your amortization schedule, whatever you use, either the effective interest method or straight line method here. All right, so that covers that.